I am begging you to please, please, please stop saying these five harmful things to teens who struggle with self-harm. Because the thing is, is that I know that you're trying to be useful and helpful and you think that you're being motivating and kind with these words, but there is a better way. And I'm here to tell you how. And don't worry, I won't leave you hanging. I'm gonna share some helpful alternatives as well. So the very first thing that you've gotta stop saying is, nobody thinks it's cool that you're doing that. Uh, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> people don't self-harm because it's cool or it's fashionable. People might start self-harming because they're curious and they're looking for other ways to feel better, but that doesn't mean that they're doing it because it's cool or it's a fad or it's fashionable. A helpful alternative that you can say instead is, Hey, can I share some of my coping skills with you? That's really awesome because the thing is is that they're probably searching up ways to feel better or to release some sort of intense emotional energy. So if you can share with them some healthier or helpful coping strategies or skills that work for you, you might be able to help them replace that self-harm behavior with something that's healthier. This next one makes me cringe because it's so wrong, but please, 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 please stop saying you're just doing it for attention. I promise you they're not doing it for attention. I don't know when attention got such a bad rap or why it's so wrong to want attention and care and consideration from other people because that's really what we mean when we say that. A helpful alternative to that is to say, I'm here for you. The reason why that is such a better, more helpful alternative is because oftentimes when people are doing things that historically we would have called attention seeking behavior. It's really about seeking connections with other people. So if you can establish with them that you are here for them, that you aren't going anywhere, that you want to invest in this relationship, whether it is a friendship, it's a parent-child relationship, a teacher-student, whatever the relationship is, just letting them know that you're there for them and be really clear direct and intentional with the ways that you can show up and be there for them. So I think you all know by now that I am a therapist that's licensed to practice with people who are physically located in the states of Connecticut and New York. I wish it was different, but I don't make the licensing law, sorry. So you can imagine that I am somebody who is a resource for many people, all of my active clients and all of the personal relationships in my own world and life. I have to be really intentional with letting people know what my capacity and limits are for being available. Because the thing is, is that if I'm in session with a client and somebody else is needing my help and support, I'm not gonna be able to answer the phone during that session. That wouldn't be right or kind to the person that is in front of me that I'm helping. So what I do is that I give alternative resources as well for when I'm not available. And I'm very clear that I'm not available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I don't think that's healthy for anybody, <laughs> especially when you're supporting a friend who's struggling with something like self-harm. YouTube actually put together a wonderful resource that I include right in my description. The next one that you have to stop saying to people is, no boy is ever gonna like you with scars like that. Ugh, so annoying. First of all, it's really presumptuous and assuming that that person is interested in a particular gender. Please don't do that unless somebody has specifically told you that. Besides that though, when it comes to engaging in self-harm, there's often a layer of upset or shame already. Those scars might be meaningful or purposeful to the person who is self-harming, but they might also bring up more memories of shame. So when you then also layer it with the idea that somebody could not love them or care for them when they are engaging in this sort of behavior, you're reinforcing all those reasons that probably lead them to self-harm in the first place. So please don't add that. And I will also add there are plenty of examples of people who have self-harmed, who have gone on to healthy and successful romantic relationships and friendships. So it's not sense anyway. A helpful alternative that you can say instead is, ooh, ouch. Have you tried using Bacitracin or Neosporin on those? 
What's great about this is you're acknowledging that it is an ouch, it is an injury. Whether it was self-inflicted or not, the fact is it's that there is a wound there that needs to be healed. And by offering some healthy alternatives as a question, not a direction, but as a question, you know, have you taken care of that, leads the other person to understand and interpret that you care about their health and well-being, which is pretty cool and probably what you're trying to communicate anyway. So when you are promoting healing healthy behaviors, that is really useful. Please stop saying, I don't understand. You have so much in your life to be happy about. Uh, duh. <laughs> Most people who self-harm or self-injure actually express a lot of appreciation and gratitude for the things that are great about their lives. They can totally acknowledge that and still feel intense deep pain or hurt or just discomfort, which can lead to self-harm behavior because we tend to live in this very like binary thinking kind of a world, which isn't useful and is not realistic. We grow up with these books that say it must be up or it must be down. It must be left, it must be right. So getting stuck in this either or, you must express gratitude or you must experience pain isn't useful or helpful because it's just not realistic. You can have multiple moods and multiple feelings and emotions at any point of time by relating back to that, that it like not understanding because they could be grateful is already assuming that they're not grateful, which they probably are. And it's also feeding into that binary thinking of it must be this, it must be that. Instead, a more helpful alternative would be to say, you must really be struggling right now. What's nice about that is you're expressing care and concern and acknowledging that they're really struggling. You can also boost that and follow it up with a, I'd love to hear more about what you're going through. Oh, that would be great. Please don't say that though if you're really not interested because then you can just reinforce that negative experience for them. Oftentimes, a lot of these kids and people who struggle with self-harm think that they have to go it alone, that nobody is interested, that nobody could possibly care. So showing care, attention, and concern can be really healing for their own healing process as well. Okay, so this one is the worst. Ah! Whoa, you must be crazy. First of all, most people aren't crazy. Most people are doing the best that they can to cope and survive whatever struggles or stress that they're going through. Please don't call people crazy in like a negative way. It's horribly cruel. It's horribly unkind. If you're saying like, wow, you must be crazy, like crazy fun, like I'm all for that. But saying somebody's crazy as a negative stereotype just reinforces all that shame that we talked about before and you don't want to be doing that. Also showing shock and like extreme shock like that, like whoa or wow, also not cool. Most people who self-harm again don't always feel great about it. By showing shock and awe like that, you're actually reinforcing for them that they need to hide who they are and what they're struggling with rather than reaching out for help and support. So something better that you can say instead is, hey, have you considered talking to a therapist about that? They can really help. What's lovely about this is that most mental health therapists are trained to support people who are struggling with self-harm and self-injury. I happen to be somebody who specializes in this area, but if they're not, they can often help link you up with a therapist who is. I can tell you that I have seen people recover from self-harm over and over again. I have seen them do it with and without therapy. I'm not saying that therapy is the end all be all. I happen to be trained as a therapist and so that's the style that I help support people with. But the thing is is that you just want to offer them some specialized professional care or support if they're struggling that much. If they happen to already be working with a therapist or you're just looking for other ways to support your friends who self-harm, I highly recommend that you watch the video on your screen right over here where I'm sharing some helpful tips. If you found the information in this video useful and helpful, you know what to do. Go ahead and share it. Thanks for watching.